Welcome! This is an unofficial video guide to the neurologic examination of the patient. This video will teach the viewer how to properly elicit the muscle stretch reflexes and will describe the expected reactions in both the normal and abnormal patient. All information within this video is based on Demeyer's The Neurologic Examination Textbook. Reflexes are rated according to the extent of movement. A score of 0 is given when no visible response is observed upon stimulation. This is called areflexia. A score of 1 is given when there is little movement or hyporeflexia. The score or grade increases as the amount of activity increases. A score of 2 or 3 is considered normal while the highest score of 4 is given when there is clonus and excessive movement, termed hyperreflexia. Having introduced yourself and taken a thorough history, proceed with the neurologic examination in the appropriate sequence. Before examining the muscle stretch reflexes of the patient, make sure that they are seated comfortably with the knees reaching the edge of the seat with the legs dangling. A neurologic hammer with a pointed handle shaped like a spoon is recommended. The proper use of the hammer is by holding it loosely between the index finger and thumb and letting it act as a double pendulum together with the wrist. The following part will now demonstrate the different techniques in testing for the muscle stretch reflexes. Each test will be labeled in the corner of the screen and shall be described accordingly. We begin with the jaw reflex followed by the biceps, supinator, triceps, finger flexion, quadriceps, triceps surae, toe flexion, and plantar reflexes, followed by the test for clonus and ending with an example of a patient with hyperreflexia. Let us begin. Ask the patient to keep their mouth slightly open. Put a finger across the patient's chin right below the lower lip and strike your finger with a hammer. Ask the patient to place the right arm over their ipsilateral thigh. Instruct the patient to let their right elbow rest over your left hand and using the thumb, palpate for the biceps tendon and press over it. Then, percuss your thumbnail using the pointed end of a neural hammer. Repeat with the patient's other arm. Ask the patient to place their right arm over their abdomen. Instruct the patient to let his or her right arm rest over your left hand and using your thumb, palpate for the radial tuberosity and press over it. Then, percuss your thumbnail using the pointed end of the neuro hammer. Repeat with the patient's other arm. Two maneuvers can be done to elicit the triceps reflex. For the first maneuver, draw the arm across the patient's chest. Then using your hand, cradle the forearm and hold the wrist, making sure that the elbow is at 90 degrees. Percuss the triceps tendon which is located just above the elbow. For the second maneuver, let the forearm of the patient dangle over the examiner's hand. Then, strike the triceps tendon. Repeat either of these maneuvers with the patient's other arm. Support the patient's right hand using your left hand. Using the index finger of your right hand, press the joint of the distal phalanx upward. Subsequently, using your thumb, depress the distal phalanx of the patient's middle finger, then release it. Repeat with the patient's other hand. Support the middle phalanx of the patient's middle finger with one hand. Using the index finger of your other hand, flick the patient's distal phalanx upward. Repeat with the patient's other hand. Let the patient sit such that their feet are dangling over the floor. Place your hand under the patient's knee such that the angle of the knee is at 90 degrees. Strike the knee below the patella. Repeat with the patient's other knee. Let the patient sit such that their feet are dangling over the floor. Make sure that the patient's ankle is relaxed and support the ball of the foot just enough to put tension on the Achilles tendon. Strike this tendon with a neuro hammer. Repeat with the patient's other foot. Let the patient sit such that their feet are dangling over the floor. Rapidly flick the toes of the right foot upward and repeat on the other side. Eliciting exaggerated flexion of the toes indicates a positive rosalismo sign. Let the patient lie in a supine position. Using the tip of the handle of the neuro hammer, gently rub the plantar region of the foot, from the sole going upward crossing medially, as shown. Repeat with the patient's other foot. Extension of the hallux indicates a positive Babinski sign. When testing for clonus, dorsiflex the patient's foot in rapid sequence. Subsequent rhythmic beating movements indicate clonus. In the hyperreflexive patient, minimal stimulation causes excessive reaction, as shown. 